Hey everybody and welcome to number five of our Growth Insights series where we're gonna share the latest tools and all the best articles just for you. And of course we keep all the best for last. This one's a classic, but we want to share it again. Thanks to Yob for sharing Duck Soup. Duck Soup is a Chrome extension that'll automate your lead generation on LinkedIn. It basically grabs all the data on profiles that you're interested in, location, email, company, etc., and neatly organizes it in CSV files and ready for you to download. Slightly black hat, depending on what you do with it, but it can also be used for cold outreach or just for competitive analysis. Now, similar idea, but for Facebook this time, Grouply.io allows you to do something similar, but with your favorite Facebook groups. So you find a Facebook group where your target audience is hanging out and you get this beautiful CSV file with a bunch of information on those members. Oh, and as always, you can find all of the links from the things I'm describing in the description below. Okay, next tool. Let's look at this little gem that Jim shared with us. RevealBot automates your Facebook ads and AdWords. Basically, you define the rules and your ads are started or paused. Your bids and budget is increased or decreased automatically for you. And the best part is RevealBot also keeps you posted on any changes through Slack notifications with its little bot. By the way, Instagress, one of the most famous Instagram automation tools, got shut down by request of Instagram itself. But no need to worry, there's actually a replacement now. It's called InstaNoble and it covers the same thing Instagress used to do. Auto likes, auto commenting, and a comment tracker. And it even allows you to schedule posts. Thanks to Ferdy for sharing this one. Now here's sort of a cute little random tool that we found but that we really fell in love with. Data Gift Maker allows you to create rapid small videos to compare data. It's great for internal communication or just to use for social media. And the best part is it's so fast to make these. Now where do we find out about all these tools? Apart from our network, we also hang out on a lot of free open Slack channels. Jim just shared this article that lists 1,000 public Slack groups. Up to you to find the ones that are relevant for you and sign up now. Speaking of Slack communities, Job shared a really cool playbook on how he's strengthening our community. Chatviz creates data visualizations on your Slack team. Who's most active, which post gets the most reactions, which channels are most active. It doesn't just make it visual, it actually makes our community feel much more alive and real. Okay, cool. Now let's do a little bit of reading. Let's look at some charts. This one's pretty interesting because it gives us a breakdown of the Google Facebook battle. So basically search versus discovery per industry. So Google still seems to dominate for things like jobs, business offers, sports, and tech. While Facebook, which is more of a discovery platform, is starting to dominate in events, lifestyle, entertainment, and education. Go and check it out. Okay, now here's another interesting chart. Guess how much time adults spend online per day on average? Give it a guess. Okay, here's the answer. We spend 5.6 hours per day on average. And this is great for us because it means that we have a lot more opportunities to reach people online with interesting information, products, or services. Oh, and by the way, thanks for giving us five or six minutes of those 5.6 hours per day. We're really grateful. Now let's look really briefly into some e-commerce benchmarks, which I found really interesting. When looking at e-commerce benchmarks, we usually only see e-commerce conversion benchmarks people actually buying a product. This chart really got my attention as it looks at benchmark add to cart rates on e-commerce sites. It looks at it on desktop and mobile in the UK, the US and globally. And it looks like the average add to cart rate in general is about 10%. I didn't know that. Speaking of e-commerce, here's a really cool little Shopify competitive analysis trick where you can find out what your top competitors on Shopify, what their best selling products are. So basically what you do is you find a competitor's store on Shopify, you add this at the end of the URL of their website, and there you go. You can see, first of all, all of the products that they sell, but what's beautiful is that they're ordered by the top selling at the very top. So you can actually find out what your competitor's top selling products are. Still on the subject of e-commerce, this is also a really cool graph, and it shows us the difference in conversion rates on search versus says browsing when somebody's actually on the website. So what this is basically saying is that your average conversion rate, if somebody searches on your website, is from 6 to 12%. Whereas if they're only browsing, the conversion rate is a lot lower. Okay, now let's be a little bit less serious. We had some fun at the office. What we did is we created a brand identity in 60 seconds, just for jokes, but check it out. Okay, Stefan, I want you to build a, I'm, I'm opening a restaurant. I want you to build a brand identity in under a minute. Oh, that's uh, easy. Super easy. Family and Spark. Yeah. Peach, Light and Basin. Rest and Salmon. Bay and Bubbles. Plain one. and Oatmeal. <laughs> cool. There, we got a name. Let's uh, throw it in emblem. Okay. So what are we doing? 20 seconds. We're building a brand identity in under a minute. We're going to ship it and uh, we're going to ask the client to pay 10,000 bucks for it. Look for something nice. Joking. Oh, this one looks nice. I just need a different color. Yeah. Something that looks tasty. Seconds. That's nice. Boom, sold. Luxury. Purple. Okay, so we got everything here. Yeah. Logos, business. 
with the logo, the yep. monogram. Nice, beautiful topography. That's it. Just download it. Okay, we can export that brand identity, ship it. Back to business, let's talk theory again. Now, we already talked about the importance of retention in our last video. According to this great article by RJ Metrics, 50% of your revenue could actually come from returning customers instead of new customers. So we really suggest to identify and cherish your top customers. It's easier to upsell than to sell to new customers. Here's a random cool tool that was shared by Stefan. If you want to play around with data visualization, you can use lists.design. Okay, now let's talk a little bit more about retention. We know that one of the greatest drivers of retention is actually push notifications or email marketing. Andy Carvel is the former head of growth at SoundCloud for mobile, and he's developed this RFF framework to help you with prioritization when building notifications. So push notifications, email, SMS, etc. This quadrant shows you which notifications to use and when. Really, really like this approach. Let's finish off with the fact that the world is changing so rapidly. Paolo found this little gem. This is what our Growth Insight series would have looked like 30 years ago. And it's now telling me to phone up the main press cell computer, which I will now do. Um, so it's a very simple connection to make. Extremely simple. Needless to say, we're seeing exponential technological growth at the moment. Oh, in case you haven't already heard yet, we're actually launching the world's first AI for marketing and growth course, where we're taking people who don't know how to code, who don't know anything about artificial intelligence, and we'll teach you everything within two days. If you're interested, we're currently selecting students for our first course that'll take place in Amsterdam. Here's the link. That's it for the number five of our Growth Insights videos. Please leave us some feedback and some comments so we can make these better inside the comments. Don't forget to like and to subscribe to help support us. This has been great, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye.